Hello, I am Arnaud Delobel, R&D Director at Quality Assistance, and today I will present an analytical method we have developed in our labs for the absolute quantification of proteins by ICPMS. This method holds potential to become the new gold standard for protein quantification in place of amino acid analysis. Here is the agenda for today. First, we'll see what absolute quantification means and how it can be performed. Then, I will explain how we developed the ICPMS method for absolute quantification and how we validated it. And finally, I will tell a few words about new developments that were carried out recently to further optimize the method. Well, why would you want to quantify your therapeutic proteins? First of all, it is quite obvious that the quantity of active substance in your drug will be directly linked to the efficacy and safety of the drug and is therefore a critical quality attribute of the product. In order to evaluate batch-to-batch -batch consistency, you will then need a precise and accurate method to quantify the protein in the drug substance and in the drug product. But the determination of protein concentration is also a prerequisite to determine experimentally the extinction coefficient, epsilon, of a protein. This coefficient is used as part of the fine characterization of a protein and for comparability or biosimilarity studies. We've seen the why, let's now see how a therapeutic protein can be quantified. First, what's the difference between absolute and relative quantification? Absolute quantification means that no reference substance is required. The usual absolute methods are the colorimetric tests, such as LORI, Bradford, or BCA, amino acid analysis, or UV spectroscopy, even if the latter is not fully absolute, as it requires the knowledge of the molar extinction coefficient, in other words, the availability of the reference protein. The traditional relative methods are ELISA, LCMS, or LCUV. They all require a standard solution of the protein that is not readily available in most cases. Let's say a few words about amino acid analysis, or AAA, which is usually considered as the go-to analysis for absolute protein quantification. The workflow is quite complex, with an hydrolysis under acidic conditions and under vacuum, followed by a derivatization of the amino acids obtained and then a UPLC UV analysis. The LCUV step is very quick, but the hydrolysis takes up to 24 hours. It is therefore a low throughput method. But the main drawbacks are the high variability and the low accuracy. This low precision and accuracy will translate into the determination of the extinction coefficient that you may further use for UV spectroscopy. So there is a clearly a need for a better method. A few years ago at Quality Assistance, we have decided to develop an ICPMS method for this quantification. Let me explain briefly what ICPMS is and for those who are not familiar with this technique. It is an analytical technique in which the sample is introduced as a solution. An inductively coupled plasma with a temperature close to 10,000 degrees is used to ionize the sample. The ions are then analyzed by mass spectrometry here on a triple quad mass spectrometer. Very specifically, we are then able to quantify each element in the solution. Initially, ICPMS is a technique that is commonly used to analyze metals. So why would we use ICPMS for protein analysis? In the case of metalloproteins, it is quite obvious, as the protein contains a metallic hetero element, but it is applicable to a few proteins only. The fact is that more than 95% of proteins contain sulfur, coming from methionine and cysteine residues, and sulfur can be quantified by ICPMS. If the elemental composition is known, it is easy to calculate the amount of sulfur atoms in the protein. And then, if you can quantify sulfur, you can easily calculate the protein concentration. That's the aim. But the determination of sulfur by ICPMS is a challenge. Sulfur has a high ionization potential, which means that the sensitivity will be relatively low. But more importantly, there are many interferences, as shown on the following table. For example, for sulfur 32, dioxygen or nitrogen oxide will have the same mass, which is a serious problem for method specificity and indirectly for method sensitivity. 
The solution is to use the ICP triple quadruple technology, for example on Agilent 88 or 8900, which allows for the operation in MRM-like mode. The first quadruple is set on the mass of interest, for example 32 for sulfur 32. In the reaction cell, oxygen is added to form sulfur oxide, and then the second quadruple is set on the mass of sulfur oxide ion, 48. This eliminates virtually all interferences, which offers high sensitivity, and in practice, the limit of quantification of the method will be governed only by the amount of residual sulfur in reagents and solvents. Let's move now to the development of the method. The first thing we have evaluated is the need for sample preparation. We have analyzed solutions containing 1 ppm of sulfur, either as sulfuric acid, as methionine, or as BSA, bovine serum albumin. You can see that the sulfur recovery decreases with the complexity of the molecule. To circumvent this issue, we decided to perform a microwave digestion step on all samples. The other points we considered were the limitation of contamination to get high sensitivity and the content of sulfur coming from the formulation. And to increase precision and accuracy, we decided to use isotope dilution with sulfate containing sulfur 34, an isotope of natural sulfur. A few words about this concept of isotope dilution. You take a sample containing yellow marbles that you want to quantify. You will mix this sample with a perfectly known amount of black marbles and you will analyze this mix. You will then take an aliquot of the sample and measure the ratio between yellow and black marbles. In our case, it will be the ratio between sulfur 32 and sulfur 34. Using ICPMS, we'll determine the amount of each isotope, each marble, and we'll calculate the ratio between the two. If we know exactly how many black marbles we added to our sample, by measuring the ratio, we'll be able to determine the amount of yellow marbles present initially in our sample. What we did in our case is to use sulfur 32 and sulfur 34. The first quadruple was set alternatively at the M over Z ratios 32 or 34. In the collision cell, oxygen was added to form sulfur oxide. And the second quadruple was set at the M over Z ratios 48 and 50 to analyze the two isotopes of sulfur oxide. Our approach was more complicated than what I showed with the yellow and black marbles. Indeed, when adding sulfate containing sulfur 34 in the sample, there is no such certified solution available. So, we had to prepare this solution by oxidation of sulfur 34 as a certified sample. The concentration of the sulfate solution obtained was determined by reversed isotope dilution mass spectrometry with a certified solution of sulfate. This is called double isotope dilution mass spectrometry, and the quite complex equation for the quantification of sulfur in the sample is shown here. Let's now have a look at the workflow of the method. First, we oxidize sulfur 34 with nitric acid and oxygen peroxide in a microwave and we had a sulfur ICP standard. We now have our standard stock solution. Then, we mix this solution with the sample solution. We use 50 micrograms of sulfur in 1 to 5 milliliters. In parallel, we also filter a sample through a 3 kilodalton molecular weight cutoff membrane filter in order to be able to measure the amount of sulfur present in the formulation that does not come from the protein. These samples are mineralized in a microwave system. Then, the sample is analyzed by ICPMS to determine the isotopic ratio between sulfur 32 and sulfur 34. And by using the equation I have presented before, it is possible to calculate the protein concentration in the initial sample. The method was validated according to ICHQ2 guidelines to show that it had suitable performance to be used in a GMP environment. BSA reference standard from NIST was used as a model compound, as it is one of the few certified protein materials available. But we also tested additional compounds, such as Prastuzumab, an approved therapeutic monoclonal antibody, a human IgG mixture from European Pharmacopeia, and a USP-BSA standard. 
In the next slides, I will give you the main results of the validation study. We first assessed the linearity of the method that also gives insights into the accuracy. We analyzed different amounts of BSA from 30 to 70 micrograms and we determined the recovery at the different levels and at each level we also evaluated the repeatability. As you can see, the correlation coefficient is close to 1 with very high precision, RSD below 0.4% and accuracy of about 101%. We evaluated the precision of the method in terms of repeatability and intermediate precision with two analysts carrying out independently six determinations of the same solutions of BSA and human IgG. As shown in the table, very low RSDs were obtained, below 0.5% for each analyst and below 0.7% taking into account both analysts. The quantification of sulfur contained in the formulation was also validated. Sulfate was added to a BSA solution and part of this solution was filtered through a 3 kilodalton molecular weight cutoff membrane. The spiked, unspiked and filtered solutions were analyzed by ICPMS and the corrected BSA recovery in the spiked solution was 99.6%, which proved that we are able to quantify sulfur in the protein even in the presence of sulfur in the formulation. The same demonstration was done with methionine, but it is not shown here. As a conclusion of the validation study, we have a method with a good sensitivity. One or two milligrams of protein in 5 ml is enough. A high reproducibility with RSDs well below 1%. A great accuracy with bias below 2%. And insensitivity to matrix effects. But the method is also rapid as the results can be obtained within half a day of lab work compared to several days for amino acid analysis. It is suitable for the assay of a single protein in solution, the assay of a protein absorbed on an adjuvant, such as present in vaccines, the accurate determination of a protein or peptide standard concentration, or the determination of the molar extinction coefficient of a protein. It is also an excellent orthogonal method to colorimetry, amino acid analysis, or theoretical determination of the extinction coefficient. This table here compares our ICPMS methodology with the most common methods for protein quantification, colorimetry, extinction coefficient by calculation, and amino acid analysis. And it shows that our method ticks all the boxes. We've now been using the method routinely for some time now. On top of the added value of this method to our customers, we noticed that another challenge was the sample amount that is needed. Therefore, we have optimized the method taking this limit into account. First, we have decreased sample consumption by a factor of 10. We have also increased the sensitivity of the method with a two-fold decrease of the optimal sulfur concentration. The range of the method is also now broader. And finally, we have included the determination of sample density directly in the method. As the sulfur concentration is measured in milligram per gram, sample density should be known to convert the result in milligram per ml. In the previous version of the method, sample density had to be determined independently, which increased the total amount of sample needed. In the new version, it is now included within the method. Today, this development is now over and it will shortly be made available to our customers. And now some take-home messages. Amino acid analysis is no longer the reference method for the absolute quantification of proteins. You no longer have to accept 10% uncertainty or more in your extinction coefficient determination. Our ICPMS method was validated and showed excellent precision and accuracy. The method can be applied on a wide range of formulations without further optimization. And the method can be run in a full GMP environment. I hope that as many of our customers that already used the method for their samples, you will be convinced that you can no longer trust AAA and need to switch to ICPMS. 
please don't hesitate to contact me by email if you have any question or comment. And see you soon.